Yeah, uh, my name is Leanne Heff. I run um, Mario Sunshine, Mario 64, and also Wind Waker HD very, very rarely. Um, and yeah, we're going to be having fun with 70 Star today. So hopefully we might be able to PB if we're lucky. Uh, we will see. But yeah. My name is Josh. I also run this game and I run Wind Waker HD a little too much, but you know, but I also do run this game uh, since it's relevant to the current conversation. But anyways. Hi, I'm CS. Um, I also run Super Mario 64. I do all the main categories and I do a little bit of sunshine, any percent on the side. And Zia's taught me everything I know as well. <laughs> no, just just no, so you're all no, aware. No, no, no. That is let's, true. No. Oh, we're starting this off with lies. Okay. <laughs> starting off strong. All right. Well, Leanne taught me everything I know about sunshine, so it just kind of balances go. out. Oh, all right. Three, two, one, go. Alrighty, as you can as you can tell um, from the very start here, um, for Mario 64, we actually start the timing on resetting the console. And you also immediately notice that Leanne is playing on the Wii Virtual Console version. Um, most people play on the N64 version. It's it's the uh, it's one that the community uses the most. It's the most competitive one. Um, Wii Virtual Console um, has its own leaderboard, though. Um, it's, um, Wii, Wii VC is technically the, uh, the fastest version in this game because it has less lag and less lag in a lot of places. Um, but it's also the mo one of the more convenient ones to get, um, especially for trying out the game. So that is the version that Leanne will be playing. Okay, yeah, just need to, to tell my chat in the chat to please pipe down actually remember to tell people to do something this time whoa <laughs> whoa <laughs> me <Okay. laughs> all right I mean, let's try to eat you you've never forgotten your own bit during a raft run before never. Then, right not like from a donation or anything that would never happen no i mean i would i wouldn't know anything about that no. oh my gosh we got the jonah wall bonks that's no. not good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Now you might now it, it, it happened really quickly, but Leanne actually skipped a minor cutscene with Lakitu coming down to talk to Mario. Um, she was able to long jump onto the very edge of the bridge and just narrowly escape the uh, the trigger for activating that Lakitu cutscene. So she skipped talking to Lakitu, which saves around five to ten seconds, I think it is. And then here we have the bomb clip. Eight. Okay. And then here we have Bomb Clip to get this star behind the cage. Normally you have to pound the, uh, the, the, wooden, the wooden stump that's holding together the chain chomp, and then he smashes the gate down when you free him. But with uh, grabbing that bomb as it's about to explode, it actually pushes Leanne back and helps her to clip through the gate. Yeah, yeah there's a, at the start of this run, there's like three major things that can kind of cause time loss. Um, it would be the bomb clip, Lakitu skip, and then also this next level I'm doing here with the uh, hundreds wants. Um, because this level is quite cycle based, so uh, normally I would say if I mess up two of the three, I kind of call it and restart the run. Uh, thankfully we got two out of three, so even if I uh, fell this one, it shouldn't be too bad, but hopefully we won't. It would be nice to get three out of three if we could. Let's not forget bonking into walls either. That's true, I did bonk into a wall, but that was just for good luck, so. Oh! <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah, yeah so in in some cases, um, collecting a hundred coins is actually really fast for for seventy star. So some hundred coins take a really long time, but some like this level, it's actually really fast, especially considering you can get two stars in one go. So the really, I think the really great thing about 70 Star, and probably why it's one of my favorite categories, is just because this is Mario 64's any percent, no major glitches, essentially. So you're not going to be seeing a lot of like really, really intense tricks or anything, but you're still going to be seeing a lot of tricks like bomb clip that you saw in Bomb on Battlefield just before. Um, very, very minor exploits. So it's definitely. Sticking to the pure nature of the game and just really focused on movement and just getting through the levels cleanly, so it can make for a very exciting run. 
So yeah, for that level we did miss the cycle, um, but like I say, 2 out of 3 isn't too bad, so um, off to a decent start with this run, I would say. Yeah, so the the cycle the cycle on that particular star was the uh, the spinning that spinning platform that Leon was standing on, or at least it was one of the things. But that's like the main thing because you want to be able to get over there uh, to where you can step on it and then ride it to get the other uh, red coin. Um, if you're too slow, then it's gonna be on the other side and you have to wait for it to come around again. And then here is Womps. I was about to start describing another star, but Leanne has this very um, interesting habit of doing completely random stars in different orders, <laughs> instead of having a set order, which is usually the smartest thing. But you know, um, Leanne is Leanne has her ways. I I have a reason that I do that. The reason I do that is because if I'm reading chat, sometimes. Some levels are easier to remember and do and take less focus than others. So if I do the easy ones when chat is um, when chat is going faster, then I can catch up with chat as well. So just me multitasking, you know. That's my excuse anyway. It's a pro shooter. Which you know, That's what, a which, I mean, it's it's smart. I mean, that that is the smart reasoning, but you know, it's not going to stop me from making fun of her. So <laughs> it's smart until I do the wrong level and then cry. <laughs> <laughs> And then ask yourself, what star do I have left? <laughs> yeah, or ask chat as well. That's always fun. <laughs> you know, one of these times they're just gonna start like telling you the wrong star. You know, they, they already do that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do cannonless now. If you want to explain anything about cannonless. Sure. Um, basically, the thing with cannonless is that typically in Wants Fortress, there's a cannon over on the far end of the level there that normally you blast at this wall that Leanne's about to kind of just throw Mario at right now. And that star grab right there, the wall kind of has like this tiny hitbox in it. And if you hit that hitbox just right, it kind of warps Mario up with a ledge grab and it lets you grab the star. So it's kind of like the wall isn't there, but it is. It's kind of a it's kind of a weird trick about and, and how it works. And there's like 50 million different setups for cannonless, but all of them essentially accomplish the same thing, which is letting Mario get that like glitchy ledge grab that warps him up into the star. It's a, it's a pretty neat trick. Yeah, I think it's had a pretty rich history too, because for like for a while, I'm pretty sure it was like really, really precise with like no real good setup. So mm, it was like yeah. one of the big reset points in in the early days of SM64. But now yeah. there's a whole bunch of setups you can do, including the one that Leanne just did there. That is the classic sock holder setup. You're going to be seeing that from a lot of runners. A lot of runners go for sock holder setup because it really just is the most consistent setup for cannonless. Pretty yeah, easy to learn, too. Very easy to learn. Very easy. Yeah, it's nice. I feel like Cannonless looks a lot worse than it is because, I mean, at least the way I do it, it's kind of just memorizing a set of inputs and just hoping. I think other runners maybe do it a bit more, a bit more of a difficult way to save like a few seconds or so, but it's mm -hmm. not too bad, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're done with Womp's Fortress. Interestingly enough, I believe Womp's Fortress is the only level that we get every star from. Every other level, we'll either get most of the stars or we'll just run in there and get like one or two stars. It just, it really just depends on the speed of the stars. We wanna, we wanna try to get the fastest ones as possible given we're trying to get to a set number, that being 70. So Leanne is going to beat the, uh, the record time on the, uh, on the slide here, which gives you this, uh, this extra star. And then she's actually going to do the slide again to get the the regular star. So that's a quick and easy two stars uh, she can get right off the bat. I really thought Jonah was going to make a pun. <laughs> oh, but I, I, I didn't actually. <laughs> by going downhill or something. Yeah, well, I can't let a pun slide. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly, honestly, I think that was beautiful. Um, oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, wow, two fourteen point eights coming out from Leanne here, matching the exact slide time of the last one. That's like kind of impressive, to be honest. Um, the 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 beautiful thing about seventy star is that even though it's a longer category, it is still comprised of kind of like Jonas said, just a lot of very quick 
you go in, they're done in like 25, 30 seconds kind of stars. Like, so even though it's long, it's just a big compilation of very short stars. So it can still make for just a really, really interesting game or a really interesting run to do and a really interesting one to watch. Mm -hmm. If you like, this is what I would consider like the, the midway category. Like you have your short categories like 16 store. You have your longer categories like 120 store. Where's she going? Um, and 70 store kind of meets in the middle. <laughs> Leanne, where are you oh, going? Oh no. Leanne's navigational. <laughs> that was a very yes. interesting way to leave time. Sorry. I was just uh, trying to take away from Jonah there. Okay. okay, well, Leanne's now the skills coming back. into play here. <laughs> I, uh, I, was, I was just guy. about, like, I was just about to praise that wing cap because the first two coins <laughs> there can be really, <laughs> can be really hard to get. Um, because I mean, if you lose height, you, you probably know this even if you've done it casually. If you play this game, um, if you lose height on the wing cap, there's no way you're gaining that height back, pretty much. So it's just kind of a disaster. Um, and you really want to make sure in the wing cap levels, you're just getting exactly where you want to get as fast as possible. Um, so I did have that happen, and then I don't even know, I got a bit lost in the air there, but we move. You ever thought about being a pilot before? I considered it, but I didn't want to take away from the other pilot, so I said that. Oh, okay, yeah, oh. that's fair. Yeah, just too good at it. Very humble, very humble. Yeah. Yeah. So we can see Bowser in the Dark World. It is the first of three Bowser stages that you are going to be seeing in any run that you do in Mario 64. And since we are doing 70 Star, Leanne is collecting the red coins using a lot of interesting camera angles. If you have ever watched this game yeah, before, okay. you might be you might be used to see different camera setups, but um, Leanne still just kind of zooming through these red coins here. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't too bad at all. Well, this too is shabby. A, yeah, this is a this is a very easy level to die on, given there's so many places you can fall. <laughs> from experience. We all do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like to. I, I'm very stubborn about my camera angles. I I make them up myself, and I just I have to keep at them. Yeah, very very original setups. I I might add. Yeah. It's the Leanne halfway. Mm -hmm. Keep it original. We have many in chat saying Leanne isn't like other SM64 runners. <laughs> I'm my own runner. <laughs> right, so a key detail here that we have to be aware of is that um, we got a key. That, that's, that's all you need to know. Hey. Get on. So funny. Jonah's got the keys to success, some might say. That's right. So hey. may I interject to uh, read off a donation here? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So we have one from developer Rowan uh, in the amount of sixty-nine dollars, stating, "I know that this, I know what this looks like, but this is actually a reminder to Leanne. She needs seventy stars, not sixty-nine, <laughs> to get into Bowser in the Sky. <laughs> Jokes aside, it's going to be a great run." <laughs> it's okay, oh, Rowan. God. It's okay. Shout uh, out, I've Rowan. Got... Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. I've got a lot of people here to remind me. For anyone who uh, doesn't know, I was on PB Pace on my stream. Was it last? Well, not last stream today, but a recent stream. Uh, very good PB Pace, and I just went to Bowser too excited with 69 stars and lost 20 seconds. So it was very sad, but we still PB'd. So. Still got it. Still it was okay. It. Secure the that bag. That means we have 20, 20 seconds time save for the end of this run, if you think about it. So it was meant to be. It was, it was for ref. Also, I do want to point out, you might you might be wondering to yourself, um, wait a minute, we just did Bob on Battlefield, why didn't we just do that while we were there? Well, with the, uh, with the strats we were doing in this run, um, we actually did not have the wing cap to be able to do the strat that we ended to get that star at the island. So it was actually better to get the one star from the chain chomp to unlock the rest of the levels, and then come back after we get the wing cap, to be able to get that star real quick while we're while we're right next to the level. However, it is possible to get that star without the wing cap. If you're that like cracked at, if you're cracked at the video game. Um, it's a trick called Island Hop. And you have to do some like crazy setup with a wall kick and like a triple jump dive in Bomba Battlefield. It's it's actually insane. Like, yeah, it, it, it's the kind of it's the kind of strat that world record runners go for. 
I was going to say, I, yeah, like, how, how many top runners actually go for that? Because I don't even know if I've seen it, like, the Phillon Island top. I've only seen, like, a couple of people go for it. Maybe yeah. two or three people. Island Hop? Four. Oh, of course. Yeah, me and my 52, I go for Island Hop every run. <laughs> yeah, the um, subtle 52 flex <laughs> Oh, yeah, his is flexing his PB. <laughs> no, no flexing his 118. <laughs> Now, th th okay, for the record, that's not my PB. That was my D-Rose run from the other day. <laughs> Let's be very clear. My PB is a 59. Um, but it will be but it will be faster than Leanne soon. I mean, we'll be better. <clears throat> mm. Beef, beef, beef. But yeah, I, I think if you're in, like, the 47, like, low 48, like, 47 range in PBs is when you really start... Uh, okay. Seeing most runners go for for island hop pretty consistently. This is this is one thing that is also important to, to realize about about this category and really this game in general is that this game is very heavily movement based and movement like the the movement you do is really the most important thing and it's not necessarily the tricks you do. So even if you do like even if you don't do like certain tricks or, or glitches, um, if your movement is really good, then that actually covers a lot of your time save. Now those those tricks are important, especially depending on which ones you do, but overall, a lot of your time save is gonna be from movement. And that that's what really separates a lot of times in this in this game. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, anyone who's learning SM64, uh, especially 70 star, I feel like at some point they come across a tutorial that uh, another runner, Blue Bob, made, and he basically demonstrated exactly what Jonah just said. Just he didn't do any like advanced tricks in the run, nothing that's like super impossible, and he still got a 52 alone just off of clean movement and just knowing where to go, knowing the route. So mm -hmm. movement is quite literally everything in this game. For sure. Things, that, um, um, as well to... What were you saying, sorry, Jonah? Oh, uh, I was actually I'll, I'll, asking I'll, if I can interject, if it's all oh, right. Yeah, we you got can, some more yeah. donations. Uh, so, yeah, um, we actually have these from uh, the previous run that got kind of backed up in the queue, I guess. Uh, so, from the Prince of None, in the amount of $25, they said, I hope this one has the Fairy, win fairy of Winds in it, too. And then we have a donation of $25 from Heidi PhD, stating... Big shout out to Twilight Princess. First time to see it beat this fast. Thanks for the fun, guys. I'll be on the lookout for the fairy winds here. Don't worry. <laughs> I kind of like and Mary going into the stage there. It looks a bit fairyish. We do actually have one more. Um, one from Captain Rock QC in the amount of $25. And <laughs> they say, Hello? Sometimes I'm alone, sometimes I'm not, sometimes I'm alone, hello! <laughs> Funny little inside joke here. So thank you very much everyone for the donations, and with that we have actually broken $3,000. We are now at $3,000.69 and 11 cents. Let's go! So big shout outs to everyone. Alrighty, so we get to see some very interesting flips to skip a lot of sequences here. Well, not really skip. Well, the biggest thing we're skipping here is getting onto the second floor. Because the, the way the game intends you to do this level is for the first star, you defeat all the boos um, on the first floor, and then you fight the big boo in the lobby. And then in the later star, you come up to this boo on the, on the roof and defeat him. But it's faster to do some some flips to get up to the second floor and then go up to this boo on the... On, on the rooftop to get the storm. Now for the most evil rabbit I've ever seen in my life, Mix. Can kill a lot of runs. You'd think it'd be easy just catching a rabbit, but always seems to get away from us, so we will see. Yeah, Very but... tricky rabbit. There we go. Fantastic. Nice little quick grab there. Fantastic this grab. Mips, if you see Mips' face, he, he really looks like he's seen better days, but you know what? He's as done with us <laughs> as we're as done with him. 
<laughs> Alright, time for Shifting Sandland. Or Sinking Sandland, if you're Leanne. I did True. think it was called Sinking Sandland for about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> no one told me to go like, how was I supposed to know? It's SSL. I thought the splits were wrong. I don't know. I thought it was a joke. And you do sink, so I think I think mine makes more sense, but... I mean, it makes sense. It's wrong, but it makes sense. <laughs> okay, so we got, we got a really cool jump here. Um, Leanne, is going, is, Leanne is going to jump on the Shy Guy here to get, get to this Talon um, really, really quickly. Um, the, I think the normal strat is you have to wait for the Talon to go near one of the uh, one of those pillars. Like, you have to stand on top of the pillar and wait for him to get over there. But Leanne can bypass that by jumping on the Shy Guy and getting all the way to where the Talon is to get that to get that sword to spawn a little bit earlier. And so for this uh, for this next sword here, Leanne's going to go and grab a, a the green shell over at this box. Uh, the the biggest thing to uh, note about this sword is that you have to be really careful on these pillars because if you if you approach it in a weird way, it actually um, deletes the <laughs> the uh, the shell and it get takes you off the shell, which is Pretty slow, um, as, and especially earlier on there when those pillars are like around the a sinking sand land. I mean, um, the sinking sand there. Um, but once you get on all four pillars there, um, you can break the top of the pillar or the pyramid rather. There is a uh, there is a trick to skip that. Um, it's not the most beginner friendly thing, um, to my knowledge. Um, the way you do it is you do the same thing as we did in. Uh, uh, with bomb clip from Bob on Battlefield, the one where uh, Leanne clips through the gate with the other uh, bomb. But you do that same thing, except clipping into the pyramid. But there's like a lot of extra um, complicated jumps you have to do in order to make it work. Uh, Zia's probably can explain it a little bit better than me, but um, that's the I advanced mean, strat. Yes, yeah, you have to do this like kind of weird thing with when you re grab the bomb. Um, you have to do like a dive re grab and essentially if you just throw and re-grab the bomb it will eventually explode even though it's like big and like kind of glitched out and stuff but if you do this dive re-grab it sort of just suspends the bomb at that point um like regardless of what frame you grab it on it just suspends it at that point so it doesn't explode and it allows mario to regain motion while also keeping the momentum from the bomb grab, and then you can ground pound through the top of the pyramid. It's kind of a convoluted trick, and that was a very like short way of explaining it. But that is uh, that's kind of the essence of it. Sounds convoluted. It is very convoluted. <laughs> but Definitely. today we are. It's just four pillars, open open pyramid. Simple as that. And Thankfully, now we did the, uh, the the final wing cap level at the end, at the beginning of Lethal Lava Land, so we don't have to worry about wing cap physics uh, for the rest <laughs> of the run, which is nice. <laughs> like getting them out of the way. Yeah, it's easy to forget if you haven't played this game in a long time that the wing cap, um, the way the wing cap works is very wonky. Um, it's very hard to gain height with the wing cap. You pretty much have to do that with jumping or getting in a cannon. Otherwise, the wing cap is basically just a, a glide mechanic in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not like um not like in Mario Galaxy or whatever where you could use it to fly. It, it's it's mainly used as a gliding mechanic, so it's a, it's a little deceptive in that regard. Um, also, um, with the current star we're doing, Leanne did a, a few tricks, a, a few uh, sort did some manipulation there to get the. The bullies Movement. to where exactly she wanted them to be so that she can get all three in the lava and then was able to ground pound where the big bully was spawning to just knock him straight into the lava. So a very quick bully fight. Taking a really firm stance against bullying to be honest. Just honestly very very uh, cool to see from the streamer here. Just an inspiration you know. <laughs> nah, <not because> of <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta bully the bully. Exactly. True. We have never bullied you before. What are you talking about? Well, Scott about? hasn't. Scott's always, always team Leanne. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leanne can't defend her bullying here, given she bullied me at the start of this marathon. True. <laughs> I didn't try it. But I was nervous. She got to let me off. 
Leanne, see, Leanne fights the nerves um, by bullying her friends. Um, I, I can't count on the. I, I can't count on both my hands the amount of time she's blamed Zeus uh, today <laughs> in her practice. Um, it was his fault, to be fair. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh! See, Zeus, that was your fault. Oh okay. You know what? You know what? I'll take. I'll take the fall for that one. Thank you, Zeus, for taking the fall when I normally do. <laughs> nice pun as well, taking the fall. Uh, uh -huh. I was hoping you'd get that. Very good. So, um, with the current star we're doing, there is actually, again, another trick we can do, which... Um, the, I mean, the bomb star that Jonah was talking about earlier, I've never actually attempted, but the alternative here I have attempted and gotten a few times, um, and it's called Lava Boost, where, basically, you long jump towards the lava that's going up in kind of a waterfall way. Um, and you can just skip that entire going round section and stuff, but it is pretty risky if you're not very fluent in it. So for a, for a marathon run, it's just better to, to not just in case, but it's a really, really cool trick for sure. Yeah. And at least in, at least in my own personal practice, I actually, I actually timed it myself. Um, and it seemed that like going through the volcano um, only lost like around five to ten seconds, so it really didn't lose that much time. So yeah. going going around the volcano, especially earlier on, um, you can you can definitely get away with that and still get pretty good times. <laughs> All right, so now we're in Dar Dar Docks. Um, so Leanne has to open these chests in a very specific order. I don't know if the game actually tells you the order, but fortunately this is a speed run. We, we know everything. Um, <laughs> so we're going to open these chests um, in, their, in their correct order. Um, yeah, the game never actually tells you. It's a trial and error. Um, be too nice on Nintendo. <laughs> Right. Um, so that being said, uh, we actually have some more donations in, if I may interject for just a few moments here. Yeah. All right, we've got one from Goofed, everyone's favorite Goof. Uh, in the amount of $5, Goofed says, Leanne is a nerd, smiley face. But really, best of luck and insert Jonah level pun here. <laughs> and then we've got one from Pod5Guy for $5, saying, Pod5 dollars. <laughs> Thank you both very much. So I just want to remind everybody that uh, if you donate during this run, uh, you can get in a drawing to get a Twilight Princess boomerang as long as you donate $25 minimum. So please keep that in mind when you are donating and if you would like that awesome looking Twilight Princess boomerang, uh, just donate $25 to towards a great cause. Okay, so this star here, um, compared to the other two, is, I would say, pretty subpar. Um... Can I change my commentators, please? <laughs> <laughs> also, I, also, I do want to remind Leanne to tell people about what um, the water sound effect sounds like. I was, oh, I yeah. was literally considering earlier, I was like, do I, do I not? So if you're, you know, insane and you run this game a lot, you kind of need to have a, a way of coping with hearing the same sounds 24-7. So my way of coping is if you listen here when Mario swims, it sounds like in a Cockney accent he's saying, well, ah, ah. It probably doesn't sound like that, but to me it does. <laughs> I mean, it's not even really Mario, it's the, the water sound, but that's how yeah, I... Uh, Ever since know, you brought it up, <laughs> ever since you brought it up, I can't unhear it, honestly. Same. Um, uh, also, just um, in regards to the donation incentive I mentioned about the boomerang, you do have to specifically select that you want to get the uh, boomerang as your incentive. So please be sure to do that. So here we are in Bowser in the Fire Sea. Bowser stage number two, also getting the red coins here, and in my opinion, I think, uh, I would say this one's harder than Dark Worlds, just in general, there's a lot more that you can do, and a lot more that you can go for in this Bowser stage, and I feel like it's a lot easier to just, like, slip up in this one, um, that is not a commentator curse, by the way, just throwing that out there, um, but yeah, this is the last Bowser stage. You do have to get the red coins in. The last one, Bowser in the sky. At the end of the run, we just kind of 
cruise through the level as fast as you can. No red coins needed. Yeah, because at that at that point we already have our 70 stars, so it's just time to time to go beat the game at that point. This um the lava cycle in this level, especially the way I do it, can always be a bit of a toss up because especially with those that blue or grayish like flooring I just went to. Um, depending on when I hit the cycle, they could be fully open, so it could be nice flooring to run across, or it could be kind of like it just was, where it's mostly lava and you kind of want to avoid it as much as possible. Um, so we did okay at avoiding it there, but that can always be a bit of a scary moment because you don't want to get a full-on death half well, halfway into the run, really. So. Okay, so a fascinating thing about this Bowser fight, you notice how the, uh, the stage kind of curves here. Um, you want to be careful to not do a ground pound there, um, because there is a chance that when you ground pound while the stage is swerving like that, that you just clip through the ground and fall in the lava. It's, it's quite fun. I did not know that, so you just told me something. <laughs> um, I'm glad you don't ground pound. <laughs> Alright, so Bowser and the Fire Sea, I like to consider the kind of the halfway point of uh, of a 70 star run. Star count wise, and just kind of like where you are in the castle. Um, this is the point before you can see Leanne is going to be going upstairs to the latter half of the stages here. And um, always a good indicator for things like pace if you're uh, if you're watching a run or if you are running the game yourself also um for the for the math experts out there yes we do know that 34 times 2 does not equal 70 but it's it's close <laughs> enough okay so for this for this 100 star um i me this is me personally i think this is the hardest one out of um the 70 star route, or at least the 70 star route that um, that Leanne is doing. Um, this one, this one just has a lot of moving parts, and falling in at any point in this one uh, loses a decent amount of time. Uh, it's all very technical in in this one, especially in compare in comparison to the other to the other ones. Yeah, and it is the most RNG dependent 100 point star in 70 star also. All of the boxes that you break at the beginning, the location of that spider that you saw uh, before she ground pounded the blue coin switch, and even where the coins go when you kill that spider, uh, all of that is RNG and all of it can really throw you for a loop and, and lose a little bit of time, but luckily the RNG looked pretty nice. Yeah, so far so good. It wasn't rough. Ha ha. Ha! Rough, Wait, that's the event. Whoa! Wait a minute, Whoa. hold on. <laughs> Where am I? Well, there's always oh. riff raff in your chat. <laughs> 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 she said the thing. Whoa. It's like I'm when they wrong. say the title of the movie in the movie. <laughs> All right, that being said, uh, we do have some more donations here. We have some time to read them. Yeah, go for it. All right, so from 77 Iceberg Lettuce in the amount of $25, he says, Good luck, Leanne. I hope we can all enjoy some delicious Mips stew after this run. P.S. Save the animals, except for Mips. <laughs> And then, from, and then from Anonymous, uh, in the amount of $50, they say, great cause, great runs. And another one from Anonymous, in the amount of $100, they say, pipe down. Pipe down. Pipe down. Also, it is worth noting here that, um... You might notice that Leanne is entering the uh, the level at a bit of a lower position than <clears throat> than normal. Um, she's actually being very careful to enter the level at the lowest part of the painting because that's actually what sets the uh, water level to be at the very bottom. Uh, the way the water is, um, the the height of the uh, the water is dependent on how high you jump into the painting. So if you were to jump at it at the highest point, it, it'd be really deep water. Um, so, Leanne is manipulating the water to be just what she wants it to be for any particular star. There will be one star where she puts it around in the middle, but of 
course that is what's fastest for that store. That's this one actually, that was like perfect timing. So it's just for this last one, we uh, yeah, we enter a higher thing, try and jump on this spider. Also, ZS, were you secretly judging my uh, my wall jump angle uh, there? My... I wasn't gonna say anything, <laughs> I wasn't angle. gonna say anything. <laughs> I did that my camera angle, gosh, I almost failed. <laughs> I uh, you, you did brush up against the wall, I was like, Ooh. yeah, it, it was a dodgy angle. Ideally, when you're doing the wall jumps, there you want to be kind of perpendicular, like directly to the wall. Um, but I kind of forgot to do that, so that's why we failed the other uh, wall jumps there. But still, uh, still did a pretty, pretty decent wet dry world there overall. Still good pace here, honestly. Yeah, this is this has been yeah. a good run so far. Four minutes out of wet dry world, I would say it's pretty good pace though. Now we're about to do the one thing Jonah taught me. You ready, guys? The that one thing. That Whoa, wall jump. A, a single wall jump. <laughs> the one and only thing he taught, and it's just a wall jump. <laughs> it was a yeah, wonderful it, wall jump. So, totally. Good yeah, totally absolutely. the only thing I've taught her. Totally. <laughs> That's really, the most important wall jump in the game. I mean... I mean, it's... Yeah. It's so re revolutionary, in fact. Saves you from <laughs> having to turn around. Well, All right, and with that, we have some more donations here, if I may. Yeah. All right, for our, from uh, Hella Brian and the amount of five dollars. Hella Brian says, "Leanne, look out for the fireball." <laughs> <laughs> and then from Pippi in a top hat, the amount of twenty-five dollars. She says, "Shh, not looking at the boomerang. No, def not me." <laughs> So one more store after after this one. Um, nothing nothing too terribly much to it. Um, we're just gonna be defeating a bunch of really large piranha plants. Um, you do have to be careful not to fall off when you're when you're defeating them because the way you defeat them is to do a, a kick towards them. So you do have to be a little bit careful here, but otherwise um, this is definitely not one of the this is definitely one of the easier stages I think. Um, Man, you are lucky That's you're saying that at the end of the stage. Oh, no. I was gonna say, I, I like, this, like, this star is a nice easy one in general. Um, however, if you fall, like if you got hit by a piranha plant and you fell off it, it's just abysmal to try and get back into the run. So, um, I'm honestly, marathon-wise, it's probably one of the ones I was most scared for, even though it looks super easy, so. Because I would not know how to back it up, so <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad it was okay. I uh, I genuinely don't think there is a solid backup for that star. I think you can stop the, I think you can, if you want to, since you're already on the big version of THI. Yeah. Um, you can go out to the beach area and get reds if you fall off. But I mean, that's you might as well just exit stage or die and go back in at that point. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, if you're in the water, you can't even really exit stage. So. Also true. True. Yeah, it's just a it's just a mess to fall her all around. Alright, doing some cool things here. So this kicking thing, I, I don't think we've mentioned it yet. It, we've seen it a couple of times. Um actually actually yeah. So that kicking thing, if she's holding A and mashing B, she's able to perform kicks and that actually allows her to go up really steep hills without sliding off. Um, I think it, I think it just cancels um, Mario sliding. So if she keeps doing that, she can just go up hills that she otherwise can't normally go go up. One of the neat little uh, movement quirks about this game. It is a very interesting quirk. All right, and we actually have some more donations to read, if I may. Yeah. All right, so from Renegade Boss, in the amount of $5, they say, Dogs rule, cats drool, goofed is a nerd. And that was uh, $5 towards the dogs, uh, incense that we have going on. And then from Anvil Owl, in the amount of $5, we have, Pipe down, you melt. 
Leanne Bless. And then from Slams Maloney, in the amount of $50, we have... Thanks to all the runners and everyone in chat. Donate to Planned Parenthood and the Stardew Cat. Nice little rhyme there. I like it. Also, I do, I do want to mention that triple jump that Leanne did at the top of the uh, the mountain. I also taught her that. She's not going to mention that, so I'm going to. So, yeah, just a little side note there. <laughs> I would like to mention that I did that without having done it before just now, so that was kind of nice. Well, I had done a triple jump earlier, but that was kind of new. Impressive. Impressive. Learned by the best teacher. Sorry, Zeus. Oh. Okay. Sorry, Zeus. Like, Jonah, Jonah's pretty based. I'll, I'll give, him, I'll give him that. Honestly. Based and replaced. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I, I gave you that one. I gave you that one. So I'm very happy that Total Mountain is nearly out of the way because I would say um, just generally in speed runs, I well this and TikTok clock I would say I struggle with the most. So it's definitely nice. Um, it's interesting how when you're speed running a game, like the you can have different perspectives of different levels. Because I mean, when I was playing this when I was younger, Total Mountain was my favorite. I loved the exploration in it and everything. But speed run wise, not so much. I've learned there's a lot of invisible balls in it. There's a lot that can go wrong, and it's just not the best. But yeah. Fortunately, we're out of Tall Tall Mountain now, and we're on to Snowman's Land. A nice fun level. Yeah, nothing ever goes wrong in Snowman's Land. Never. Nope. Never Not could. at all. <laughs> also solving this ice maze with relative ease. Good, because I'm not good at directions, so we can just skip it, which is always nice. Have to figure it out. Yeah, thank goodness we don't have to navigate through it. <laughs> There's a there's a lot of really neat um, little sequence breaks here in this level, such as this one to get up to this platform um, a, a lot faster. Um, we'll also see because um, we'll also see the star that's on top of the snowman as well. We'll see a, a really interesting way of, of climbing all the way up the snowman. That is quite fast. Leanne is actually making a very tactical decision by getting the red coin star in Snowman's Land. Um, there is a variation of the 70 star route, even at uh, Leanne's PB level, that you can choose to do uh, the 100 coin star in TikTok Clock at the very end of the run instead of Snowman's Land. It does save a little bit of time if you are able to get through that star optimally, but for a lot of runners, including myself, um, Snowman's uh, Snowman's Land Reds is uh, definitely the way to go. And it's honestly just a really fun star. You just get to zoom around on the shell and go for a bunch of hills and stuff. It's very fun. <laughs> yeah, when I, when I learned this game, I actually tried to learn TikTok Clock 100 stars. And it was a nightmare, especially as a beginner. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, we're, we're gonna ride the shell. <laughs> Okay, so, so yeah, we're just about to do the, um, well, the thing Jonah was explaining earlier, yeah. Yeah. I pay attention to this. And just like that, we have skipped most of the climb up the snowman. You just gotta be real careful to get that star there, star there, because it, it is easy to fall off this, this head. Um... So, getting that star really quickly. And then this last star here is is actually quite easy, and you'll you'll see why we get we get to fight another bully. Um, so going against bullying once again. This time just sliding them off there. Here we go. Yeah, so overall, this is a pretty I'd say this is a pretty cool level. Yeah, it's definitely one of those. Even though there's like five stars in this level, um, it is still a very quick stage. Like two minutes and you're done. That's a lot of true, yeah. And also, Leanne is going to re enter the stage and then exit the level to go back to the lobby. And we're actually going to go back into the basement because after 50 stars, we get to see the second MIPS. Um, so we can get a free right. star from MIPS here. And this is also why. Very nice. 
This is also why we uh, saved Hazy Maze Cave for later and didn't get it while we were here the first time because now we can come back down here to get another free MIP store. And not only that, but we can also get another a, a free Toad store right here too. So just two free stores just back to back right here. And then we can go ahead and do Hazy Maze Cave while we're here. Gotta love the freebies. <laughs> oh yes. So, uh, yeah, I may interject for just a moment, $3 uh, donation. Yeah. All right, so from Marley, we have $20 with no comments, but thank you very much, Marley. Much appreciated. All righty. So a few, um... There's a few really pretty easy stores here. Um, there's two stores we're, that we're going to get in fairly unconventional ways. Um, one, one with a clip, and another with jumping out of bounds to get to get to another area without having to navigate the normal way. Um, I believe Leanna is going to do one of the two here. Okay, so she's going to do a side flip over here to go over the wall and end up in the uh, room a little bit lower down. And she's also going to use that falling to land on that button that you're supposed to use the uh, Metal Mario um, hat for. Um, but if you do a, a well-timed uh, ground pound there, then you can just hit the button and open the door without getting the uh, metal cap. So a very snazzy way of getting that store. I think I'm gonna do the, uh, the RNG boulders now, so this will be interesting. Oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were not are, nice to me earlier. Yeah, these boulders can either go around you or they can just charge you head on, and it, there's, there's really no, no control in that. I was very, awesome, very yeah. nice wall jump there. Thank you. That was, yeah, good good RNG. The Earlier on the boulders, I had three that went straight to Mario and I died, so that was, yeah, not great, but that was perfect there, so very lucky. Must be the raff luck. Must be. I always thought that the boulders rubber banded to you, so I guess I've always just had really bad luck with them. Oh, <laughs> they always seem to charge at me. Oh, well, you know what they say. Every SM64 copy is personalized. <laughs> That's very, very true. true. And there's that clip I mentioned earlier to get to that store. So, very, very quick um, uses there to get, get those stores. Bit of a break dancing from Mario and a punch just to spice up the run for everyone watching. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Styling. So we are going back upstairs now at this point. We are entering the uh, final bits of the run here. This is uh, among the community of SM64, these two stages, Rainbow Ride and TikTok Clock, are known as Tippy. And it is probably everybody's favorite two stages in any Mario 64 speedrun. Um, everybody loves playing in this uh, part of the run. Everybody loves watching this part of the run. Not stressful at all. Um, I'm not stressful here at all. <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can just feel the sarcasm just flowing greatly <laughs> from, from, the, from my headphones. It's just, ooh, it's strong. Yeah, so we get we get the two hardest stages here, right right at the very end of the game. So we get we, we get a very strong climax here for the very end of the run. Nerves Mario. are set, hardest stages. It's uh yeah, it's it's a good old time. Mario sixty four is is very fun and fair in that way. That it just oh, yes. the two hardest stages right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite part about especially the TikTok block is how it's you know the last stage and then there's invisible walls everywhere that feel luck based that you can just hit and, and die. So really fond them. Oh, it's yeah. all part of the charm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Collision is very weird in this. Collision is very weird in this game. It's quite quirky. <laughs> yeah, honestly, as stressful as this part of the run can be, it honestly has some of the I would say most complex movement and just like some of the more exciting movement to watch just because there are a lot of points in these stages that, you know, you have to navigate with a lot of precision, and it's just, uh, it can be a lot to, to input all of these, uh, input all these things and to make Mario go where he needs to go, under pressure especially. 
Yeah, it's, it's very satisfying both to watch and to pull off. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh, that was scary. Ooh. Yeah. Well... Oh, oh my goodness. No. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh. It's okay. I think I could have saved that by going onto the uh, the carpet, but I can't say I've failed that there, so interesting. It's all good. Um, I have a donation to read if we just have a moment. <clears throat> yes. All right, from uh, Zeus. No idea if this is any relation to Zeus forty four. No. But uh, the amount of twenty five dollars. Zeus says cheeky. <laughs> And that also puts them into the raffle for the uh, tw the Zelda Twilight Princess boomerang. So that boomerang looks pretty cool. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope whoever Zeus is, they are happy with it if they win it. Sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he seems all right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Rainbow Ride can be a bit of a toughie. I um, I would say like honestly. When I'm not on like a good pace run, Rainbow Ride is probably up there with one of my favorites just because it is so movement heavy. So it feels like you're constantly moving and doing something fun. Um, but it does get, yeah. If, if you're nervous at all, it can go downhill very, very fast. Um, there we go. There we go, very nice. Thank you. I'm glad we're all in the same boat on this run. Is it even a boat? It's a ship. I mean, it's the same thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> Two sides of the same way. <laughs> Let me have this. <laughs> Fine. Okay, well, I will reluctantly admit that Leanne did teach me new strats for these two stories coming up here. Um, but that's all I will give her. And Zeus taught me them, so it's a, it's a perfect commentator runner circle right now. So, like, See, you could... So you could technically say I taught Jonah. I mean, Indirectly. you could. So yeah, so Leanne really didn't teach me anything <laughs> because... I was uh, failing them, so I, I don't know if you want to take credit for it, Zias, but if you do, then I'm, be my okay, guess. First, first of all, I'm new to them. And second of all, in my D-Rose run, I got the triangles perfectly, so... And I almost I got the other one perfectly, too, but I'm a, I, I missed one of my directions, so... You know what? Zias taught me well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, he didn't teach me well, because I just failed that, so... <laughs> Sad. Well, we can do a backup here. So, initially we were going to go for, like, I guess an extra fast way of doing that, um, where we'd go on the yellow thing there, and we'd long jump over to the right. Um, but instead, I mean, ideally, you can do this backup and you're not losing that much time, so... It's not too bad, really, as long as you get one or the other. Um, and it's definitely worth going for both. So that's the backup just there, and then you grab the stuff, and that is Rainbow Ride done. Very, very cool strats all around. All right, time for the one of even. I, I don't really know which one is harder, Rainbow Ride or TikTok Clock, but this is the second hardest, or one of one of the two hardest levels here coming up again. I'll, I'll, I'll find words eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, uh, I, I think... Sorry, go on, Jenna. I was just going to say, now it's time for TikTok clock. <laughs> Everyone follow my TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> clock is really ticking on this run. Doobie. Yeah, I, I would say, like, I, I prefer Rainbow Ride to TikTok clock. I'm not sure if it's because TikTok clock is at the very, very end, or if it's just because uh, I'm more used to Rainbow Ride, maybe. I'm not sure, but TikTok clock tends to kill a lot of my runs. Um, and also today, I mean, I've learned uh, some fast movement for this level very, very recently, maybe in like the past two, three weeks that I'm going to try and do. So that could be really, really cool. Or it could cause a lot of deaths, but either way, we'll go for it and we'll have fun and just see what happens. Yeah, TikTok clock for me was probably one of the hardest ones for me personally to learn, but it is really satisfying once you start getting some of the movement. But you'll see some really cool, really cool kicks and flips here. And pulling off it with oh, ease. Yeah. And that's a that's a tricky jump too. Yeah, that triple jump walk kick there, uh, ledge grabbing onto those uh, onto that ledge saves quite a bit of time over uh, just kind of going around the whole level, doing it casually. Um, 
kind of a nice little, uh, nice little exploit to get yourself just kind of quickly through the level. Very nice wall jump. <clears throat> and with that, that is the Thwomp Star. I would, I would probably say that's the hardest star that Leanne has here in TikTok Clock. Personally, I think the long jump is the, the hardest, but I think that's because I do a convoluted angle again. <laughs> we, we get to see Leanne's camera work uh, fully demonstrated in that star she mentioned. Okay, once again, going for the, the triple jump wall kick. There we go. Very nice. Gonna go over here again and go and, and go and grab this star here. Now I did mention earlier in the run that Womp's Fortress was the only stage where we got all the stars. Um, but if you did do um, TikTok Clock 100 coin star, um, then TikTok Clock would also be another stage you do all the stars in. This run we're not doing 100 coins, but just another thing to, to note. It's a little fun fact. All right, and that being said, may I interject for just a moment? We got some donations. Yep. All right, so from uh, ZS47, uh, they donate $10. The message, hello, I am Agent 47, disguised as ZS44. Don't tell anyone, though. And then we have ADN, or maybe that's meant to be read as Aiden. Uh, donation the amount of twenty-five dollars. It's they say zoop zoop zoop. Very nice save there a few seconds ago. <laughs> that was the craziest thing I've ever oh seen. Oh my gosh. Oh my yeah. We just had like two or three near death experiences. Um we even touched it so if this was PB pace I'd be very sad about that, but honestly not getting a death in a marathon run so far, I am fine by me. <laughs> um, speaking of near-death experiences, I did once uh, near -death. I, I I knew you I knew you snuck that in there intentionally. <laughs> it's just for my beauty, that joke. There we go. Oh why did I have to say we'd have no deaths? Oh. Okay. It's all for the, the fun. Alright. Oh, I was supposed to side flip. Okay, we'll wait for the clock. So two more stars and then we can go see good old Bowser for the end again. Yeah. Those that don't know, um, you want that that minute hand to be on uh, 12 uh, because that allows the stage to not move. Um, on any other time, it um, like if you if you go into the stage at three, then the stage moves slowly. Um, at nine, I think it moves fast, and then six, I think it's just glitchy or something like that. Like it's just like distorted movement. It's like random. Yeah. Also, um, a reminder to Leanne, uh, you have one more star to get. Thank you. <laughs> Hilarious. I didn't actually know that um, it was different different timings, like speed-wise. That's interesting. Mm. Yeah, there's a uh, movement set that you can do in TTC called Flippies, where over by where the red coins are, uh, if you go in while they are moving fast, you can do a, a series of wall kicks and, uh, and flips and jumps and stuff. And you can get up to, I would say, about the midpoint of the level very, very quickly. Saves a good amount of time on a few stars in the stage. Also, hooray, we have 70 stars. Title Yay. run. Uh, that's the category. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we came here for. Yay. The yeah, end. we got <laughs> it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, but Bowser's still here, so we might as well go go defeat him. Yeah, unfortunately, it does not end when you get the 70th star. You do have to beat Bowser still. And like I'd mentioned earlier, you are not getting any red coins in this stage. This is just pure movement through the level. Don't have to worry about those reds. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure 120 star is the only, well, the only main category that you even get uh, red coins from uh, from I, the stage. I believe so. Except for that one there for the for the fans. <laughs> the 120 runners, the 120 watchers out there. 
This is for you. <laughs> so are these Goombas here? Are they RNG as well? I, I think. I believe so, yes. Yeah, so sometimes you can do that long jump and a Goomba's just right in your face and knock you off, so it's always a little bit scary at the very end. But thankfully, they were nice to us. Okay, so, unlike the other Bowser um, throws, we have to do this three times. There's one. And thankfully, Leanne is goaded with the throws. My goodness. Very good. Yeah, wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold up. The throw third throw. And she never. Oh. Yay! Ever Yay! That. All very, right. ever very, that. very good throws. And with that, that is a sub one in a marathon. Yay. Let's go! Let's go! Let's fall off. All wait. right. <laughs> oh, yeah, Let's don't see. fall off, because that has happened. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Oh, Thank sub you. one. Did not beat my time though. I mean, what? I mean, what? Oh, what? You're 118 oh. from yesterday. No, not that one. Not TV. <laughs> I don't think we've got 20 minutes, Jonah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is that is 70 storm, done in 59 minutes and 38 seconds. Very, very good run Shocking. overall. One one death is very, very impressive. It is very easy to die in this game. Um, so yeah, very good job, Leanne, on this run. Thanks. We did a, we actually golded that last level as well because I had my splits Ooh. up. That a nice ending. Wait, what was your time on that split? Uh, I do not know. It says it went from plus one of. Oh, but that wouldn't make sense. I don't even know to be honest. Um, you can look at your. Um, actually, here I can I can check right now. I think I know how I can tell. Um. Your split oh, time it. was. Yeah. Your split time was two eleven. Two eleven. I have no idea if that's good or bad, to be honest. <laughs> uh, well, your your goal was a two thirteen, so it was a two second gold. Okay. Let's go. Yay. And a sub fifty five, some of best. Go, Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. All right, uh, we got some donations while the credits start to roll here, so if I may. Yeah. All right, so from some guy named 2D Blur, we have a $50 donation um, saying, would love to have that boomerang. Also, this run was super fantastic and hype. Well played and GG's, Leanne, and great commentary to ZS44 and Joe Aish. Great hosting as well. <laughs> Thank you. And to Suji SSBM, uh, they donated $5 saying, clean run. Even better, Raph pun earlier. No idea how Leon comes up with them. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's an art form. <laughs> and with that, it seems we have also hit our goal of three thousand five hundred dollars. So we're actually over goal. We're sitting at three thousand five hundred twenty-eight dollars and forty-nine cents out of three thousand five hundred. So awesome job, everyone, and thank you very much, everyone, for the kind donations. Really means a lot. It's going to a fantastic cause. So just from the bottom of our hearts, as Leanne would say, thank you very much. All right, and thank you, thank you, Leanne, for having us commentate. It was it was fun. Thank you for joining me, keeping my nerves at bay by uh, being <laughs> silly and stuff. I appreciate yours. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank yeah, you absolutely. Mm. Fifty-four summer best. Does that mean I have to try and get fifty-five now? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, it's an yeah, addiction. It really it's exactly, is. It's exactly it really is. what this means. Mm -hmm. Literally, the other day, Leanne was like, "I'm going for a 57," and then today she was like, "I'm gonna have to go for a 56." So I mean, you know, it, it just it, it never it never really quite ends, does it? It, it truly it truly is an just really is how it goes. Just, just shifting the goalpost a little bit, you know, just yeah, it, day by day. It, it just keeps on moving. It keeps on moving. <laughs> The better you get, the, the further the further it goes. <laughs> Absolutely. Where do you think you'll go, Jonah? What time do you think you'll go for? Uh, one that's faster than yours. I mean, um, 
<laughs> Probably, well, at first I want to try to get a 57. Um, so I think I can definitely do that with my current skill level. Well, after I've de-rusted. Um, and then I'll see from there. Because I also do want to go back to Wind Waker HD soon. Yeah. But I do want a better time in this. Because I do remember when I got sub one hour in the in this game. I remember I, I knew I could definitely go further. So now now is yeah. the time to actually to actually do so. And uh get that get that potential that potential time in there. The run I'm happy with. Sub 50. Um God, maybe someday. I, mean, I believe. Is he is getting close he is with uh, the big four, boards. I know, but a forty nine is like really it's it's hard. Like I watch runners like Elisa who are so far beyond like even myself in this game, and she has struggled. Well, she did struggle mightily with getting a forty nine. She did end up getting mm -hmm. it uh, last yeah, night. Her run is ago. very impressive. I need to and, watch at least run. It's gonna be uh, amazing. It was it was all it was on pace for a forty eight so uh, going into. Oh my gosh! So wow, <laughs> crazy. She could have skipped the forty nine altogether. But... All right. Well, I believe that wraps up this segment. Uh, so, where can we find the three of you? Yep, yeah, um, so I'm just Leanne Hef basically on every platform. Um, other than Instagram, I'm Leanne Hef underscore, but I have uh, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, so just Leanne Hef on all of those. And I am Joe Ash, um, J O A I S H. Um, you can find me on Twitch and uh, Twitter. And I am ZS44 on Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, all the good places. Oh yeah, I do also have YouTube as well. <laughs> <laughs> Plug your YouTube. I, I, knew, I, knew there was, I knew there was something else in there, right? And I completely forgot. <laughs> but yes. Plug that YouTube, Joe Aish. Go ahead. Yes. So yeah, uh, the YouTube is also Joe Ash as well. Yes, follow, follow all three of us. Um, Zeus and Leanne are, are great streamers. No you. No you. All right. Well, you, I suppose that's it. Uh, you... The three of you did fantastic, and that was an amazing run, Leon. Thank you Thanks. very much. And um, yeah, I think that'll end this segment now. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Absolutely.